Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. It is the 7th of August 2020. We're going to do an update video on Bitcoin, seeing some really interesting price action, in particular today, but in general, since breaking 9833, as we spoke about all the way back here, as expected, we've seen a violent move to the upside, and I do not think it is anywhere near done. Yeah, we're looking for a target of around 16K, and I believe we're very much on course for that. Yes, we're having a little bit of a stall at present, in particular today, and I'll explain exactly how I foresee uh, that play out to occur and when we can expect price to continue its trend. So the big picture here, we'll briefly touch on that, but the main majority of this video is going to be homing in on this shorter time frame price action, uh, really focusing on the, you know, looking at hourly time frame at least. So if you want to hear more about my take on Bitcoin, then stay tuned. What's happening, guys? All right, so I thought we'd do an update video today just because today has actually shown, shown some really interesting price action. Uh, so as I say, we'll zoom in on that in just a moment. Now, a few annotations on the chart. You can see some horizontal lines, some Elliott wave counts. So don't worry, we're going to go into it all in some good detail. All right. But the macroscopic count, as per previous videos, is the W X why where x we've got a preliminary target around 16k there's a lot of confluence around there as i say in previous videos we we i gave my justification for this level here all right um and the y basically i have it you know beneath w basically that's what you're expecting a wxy so i see it being sub 3.2k the exact location i won't be able to give an exact you know, a preliminary estimate until we have X wave in. Yeah, then you can start doing your fib extensions, you can plot your pitchforks, and yeah, then you can give a lot more accurate target. So lots of people have been asking me, what's my target for Y? All I'm gonna say right now is sub 3.2K. I've mentioned 2K, I think that's a reasonable target. Um, but um, yeah, to home in with any greater accuracy, you just gotta be patient. There's no point, you know, calling it just yet. There's really no point. All right, now just to explain these horizontal levels, basically the way I've drawn these is I refer to them as ODBs, so that's oldest daily blocks. Yeah, so you've got to go on the daily time frame, and then if you look left, you want to find the oldest bit of price action on the daily level where you see consolidation, marking out the open and close of that consolidation, and that's how you get these levels. And basically, I've done a lot of back testing. There's obviously lots of different ways you can draw horizontal levels. You can use the wicks, you can use the opens, the closes of consolidation. You can look at how many tests of these levels. And basically what I've found, well, obviously on top of that, you've got your weekly levels, your monthly levels, your yearly levels, loads of different ways you, you can plot your horizontal lines. Uh, but I've found that the if you go back using the oldest daily blocks, that's the ODB, um, yeah, they often... They, they, for me, they're giving the greatest accuracy for where you can expect to find future support and resistance. So that just explains those. The reason these ones are in bold is because this, these are the two levels that I see as the main uh, resistance for Bitcoin. All right, so we're getting caught up in this uh, few rain, uh, horizontal levels right here. So obviously, W, X, Y, we're currently in the X, which is a three wave move. So that's your first, that's your second, and that's your third. Yeah, so we're currently working on that of which this X wave, I'm giving a count as a W X Y. So we've gone up to make the W that's in the brackets there, the W and we've finished the X. Yeah, and then we're working on the Y. All right, so we've made our initial move up um, and we are stalling a little bit and I'll explain why we seem to be stalling a little bit at this point. So let's zoom in, let's go on the daily now. So we we're on the weekly, now we're on the daily. So we've gone up in this very clear overlapping price action uh, move to the upside here. So clearly a three wave-ish move, giving that a W, a bit of sideways consolidation for the uh, X, and then again, a three wave-ish move up to here. So this is where I had the W, W, X, Y coming up to. So it's this high here, not this one, not this one, not this one, that one, okay? And this is where it's very useful to use Elliott Wave because then it allows you to interpret this consolidation. 
and uh, basically uh, from this point here where the we had our WXY to make the uh, W in brackets um, we had an expanded flat so that's the A B C yeah and then we had a zigzag to the upside to make the X and then we came down in a Y which was a WXY XZ so that's the W X Y X Z now remember this bit of price action right here because we seem to be repeating it up here on a lower time frame yeah very very important um, so let's just zoom in on the four hour I want to show you what kind of price action I'm expecting right now up here so basically you can see this is the WXYXZ I had coming down to here so it's a WXYXZ you'll see each move is three waves yeah that's the giveaway so that was the termination of this uh, bracketed X here yeah so it was made up of a expanded flat zigzag WXYXZ yeah um, so that was your X bracketed X and then we're working on the Y so the Y there's lots of different ways of counting this uh, it's not the best of counts but I was looking at it as an, an A uh, bit of a running W uh, double three there for the B and then we're going up in the C which looks very very impulsive and you basically if you compare the A let's take magnet mode off if you compare the X, uh, length of A extend that from the end of B basically you come up and hit the 4.236 right here yeah so I actually had this being the termination of this big aggressive move up and then the subsequent price action was again running into an expanded flat which we'll explain in just a moment all right so let's just hide that so basically what I'm saying is we're going to continue going up in these corrective moves here we've got an A B C uh, terminating here and then we're just going to consolidate sideways okay now I explained to the group how I was seeing this as an A, B, C. And the main reason was you can see this aggressive sell off here. But for me, this was not the start of a big downtrend. Yeah, obviously, what we've seen now, we've seen this aggressive move, kind of corrective price action coming up. And now everyone's probably expecting a big aggressive move lower, taking out this low. Yeah, and certainly that can happen, certainly possible, but I don't think it's going to. And I'll explain why. Basically, we're seeing a fractal of what happened here. Yeah, this big block here. So what happened? Expanded flat, zigzag up, W, X, Y, X, Z to make the Y wave of the bigger W, X, Y. Um, yeah, so basically what we had here, A, B, C, expanded flat. Yeah, zigzag up. Now, there's lots of, it doesn't have to finish with a W, X, Y, X, Z, but if we're going to see a fractal, that's what you'd be looking out for so just to label this so expanded flat is your a b c that's your w that's x zigzag up then we're looking at the y let's imagine a w x y x z maybe coming down to here so this was a very key level uh 10.8 k yeah this is one of our odbs so very important level I, I wouldn't be too surprised to see price come down to here alternatively you could get this being your, your w expanded flat you have your x and we just see a symmetrical triangle play out or even an ascending triangle could certainly play out so so many different ways yeah so i wouldn't be in, interested in trading this at all i see it consolidating i don't expect even if we do see you know an aggressive move to the upside over the weekend as we did last weekend it's likely to come back why because you'll have a futures gap which will have a tendency to be filled okay so here i'm basically being patient sitting on the sidelines not wasting my cash and uh, yeah i'm going to see this out waiting for a move probably looking for it around tuesday next week that's what i'll be waiting for i think that's a reasonable time um so yeah basically i'm looking for a wxyxz to complete this w expanded flat uh x zigzag and then uh, perhaps if it's going to be a fractal the wxyxz may be coming down as far as 10.8k to make the y um so yeah but ultimately i see it as one big consolidation i don't see us coming down beneath this wick um but obviously it's certainly possible but i'm not interested because I, i'm not getting involved just yet this is a, a key level that we need to get back above um I want to show you some other important a major major pitchfork here and i'm going to show you uh, actually two pitchforks i want to show you 
All right. So I was anticipating this being an expanded flat ABC and perhaps was then going impulsive, you know, continuing the upward trend and actually seeing this as, you know, the start of a major trend to the upside. And the invalidation point, I want to show you the, the value of pitchforks now. So this pitchfork was absolutely key. Yeah. So basically we had our expanded flat A, B, C. Then we went up sideways price action and then we went up in the next wave. And you can plot a pitchfork for this wave. Yeah. And you can see as soon as we came out to the downside, yeah. As soon as we came out, that's it. It's over. Yeah. So it came down, managed to come back up, and then it really shot down hard. So yeah, but basically the invalidation for this move up was at this point once the lower warning line was broken. So just highlighting the importance of pitchforks. So I would encourage people to use these on their charts. Uh, really, really very suitable for determining the break of a trend. Yeah, as you can see right here. Um, so basically, what we had was a, a move up, a bit of sideways price action, and then a, another move up. So we've got a three wave move. So your first, your second, and your third. Yeah, so looking very corrective. As I say, got it as a zigzag. So that's your A, B, C expanded flat, your zigzag up, and now we're waiting for a final big correction which as I say, could come down to 10.8K if it comes down to WXYXZ. Uh, looking for a perhaps a turnaround on Tuesday, maybe a bit sooner, maybe a bit later, but I think Tuesday is a rough estimate, good estimate for now. Um, yeah, so that's one pitchfork I wanna show you. So very, very useful, let's just minimize that now. And then the next one, let's go on the daily, and you'll like this one. All right, so it requires looking at the bigger picture and this pitchfork yeah massive pitchfork so right from our 20k high down to our 3.2k low and up to our 14k pivot this point here yeah um so basically you can see just look since that was here just look at all of these levels go using this pitchfork it's a shift pitchfork by the way and we're on the log scale yeah so if you want the accuracy of this pitchfork you got to make sure you're on the log scale using the right pitchfork which is shift uh, and we're using bitstamp as well but all the exchanges should be given a similar picture all right so yeah just look i'm not going to go through each level you can see how they've been hit very nicely hit the 0 0.5 line on this side very nicely and basically we found resistance at the the upper median line here yeah and if we zoom in now let's go on the hourly you'll see how nicely it's acting as resistance once and what happened massive move down yeah we test it again what happened resistance but basically now we're seeing this consolidation there's a couple of ways you can go about trading it so an aggressive trader will will, will look for horizontal levels we'll look for the completion of an elliott wave count to complete this uh, y wave and maybe get in timing the bottom that's one way of doing it the other way is uh, rather than just estimating a bottom, you can plot a pitchfork for this bit of price action coming down and look for the break of the upside uh, of that pitchfork. Yeah. Alternatively, you can look for the break of this line because next time it goes and tests this, I think it breaks it pretty soon, retest and goes higher. So those are the, all the different ways of trading it. That's what I'm looking at. That's what we'll be discussing in the group. And um, yeah, so those are the two pitchforks I wanted to show you. So this is the major one. Yeah, so I think everyone needs to be really using pitchforks and Elliott wave as well as horizontal levels. It's the th that's what I look for. I look for confluence. I mean, you can use Elliott wave by itself, but I think you're going to struggle to make money using Elliott wave by itself. To be honest, um, you need that confluence because Elliott, any indicator, in particular Elliott wave, is subject to interpretation. There's often more than one count. Yeah, with Elliott wave, and that's why you look for the cleanest count, but once you get confluence with a horizontal level, once you get confluence with a, uh, a a diagonal line, which are given by the pitchfork, and once you get confluence from correlating charts, that's not just other crypto like Ethereum and uh, Ripple, for example, are, are, are large market caps, um, but also the Nasdaq. As I say, I'm, I've been interpreting the Nasdaq for calling this move to the upside, and I'm actually calling the high at 16K uh, to coincide with a major correction in the Nasdaq. Yeah, so another reason. So I go into that in, in previous videos, so I'm not going to address it now. But uh, yeah, that's it's all about confluence. It really is. 
Uh, and I've, I've put together the indicators that I think are the most useful. So for looking for that confluence. Um, and yeah, so that's the way I'm looking at it. So I hope that makes it a bit clearer. It's a little bit of a fractal at present. We're really on the lower time frame, on the hourly time frame, we're seeing this bigger correction, which I think was best seen on the four hour or even daily time frame. Um, but I'm expecting the same kind of play out. So just sitting in cash right now, ready to jump in early next week, not interested in the price and uh, price action over the weekend. Even if it does shoot up, I don't care. There's a good chance it fills the gap. And um, yeah, it's the, it's the midweek price action that is the most significant. So that's where I like to place my trades. So hope that's been useful. Obviously, if you are interested in more regular updates across the, the top 15 crypto uh, market caps, and um, <clears throat> then there is my group, uh, Cryptology, uh, which you can find at wave618.com or check out the uh, description of this YouTube video. Uh, but basically, yeah, this is uh, the my webpage. Here's Cryptology, here's the price of it, and this this is my educational course, and this actually includes the course, yeah, but you only have access to it whilst you're subscribed, and also the modules come out on a gradual basis, whilst if you purchase this, you get all the modules straight away, so that's the, the difference. But if you want more details, just click on each one, you'll find a full description of each one. Um, so yeah, that is there. We might be restricting entries pretty soon, maybe over the next three days. I might have to uh, uh, just close the doors because we're getting a lot of voted charts at present, which is really taking my time in the group. So uh, yeah, that's just one thing to be aware of. But over the next three days, the doors are open. And uh, yeah, so that's something to think about if you are interested in keeping abreast of what is going on here in this very complex market but i do see some explosive moves to the upside still left in the tank here on bitcoin and crypto altogether so very interesting times and uh yeah let's see how things play out all right guys gonna wrap it up take care